I want to talk about how the holy days still matter to those of us that believe in Messiah because the wedding has not been canceled. It's, that's what I would tell a lot of people that will say, oh, the Sabbath and the holy days were done away with. They don't matter. They're only for the Jews. Oh, really? Did, did, did the wedding get canceled and I didn't know about it? Did, did our wedding to, to Messiah get canceled? Really? I mean, it felt, I realized that, that uh, replacement theology has a real problem with accepting the Sabbath and the Holy Days and that they have a real problem with that. That's, the, that's one of the biggest, most evil doctrines around because the, what, the circumstances that end up coming out of that is, oh, well, we can throw away all the, the quote, Old Testament it, and that, that they separate the, the Bible. Well, you know what? It's all one book. The Bible is all the way from Genesis to Revelation with no division in the middle. These people that want to say, oh, well, then we're New Testament Christians. Oh, really? Well, then how do you get your context? But basically, this, the wedding, I'll go through the wedding real simply. Passover, bread and wine. Bread and wine was part of the marriage proposal in the Jewish wedding. If we, we eat the bread, drink the wine, we accept Messiah's pr uh, wedding proposal, marriage proposal. Then, uh, and we have first fruits, of course, and he paid, Yeshua paid the dowry. That's why he came. That's why he died for our sins, to redeem us. To redeem us so that we didn't have to pay the price. He took, he drank the cup of wrath the cup of God's wrath, so we didn't have to. Okay? So, you've got that. Then you, and you move on to Shavuot, or, or Pentecost, which is 50 days after first fruits. First fruits is always on a Sunday. Of course, the Jews would disagree with us because they believe it's the first day, after the first day of unleavened bread is first fruits, but that doesn't make sense with the scripture that says you shall count seven Sabbaths. So you have Pentecost. What happened on Pentecost? Even in the New Testament, the Holy Spirit. What was the Holy Spirit there for? It's to convict us of sin and righteous, you know, direct us in righteousness and, and put the law upon our heart. Why? Because Yeshua said, I go to prepare a place for you, but I will return for you. He will return for his bride. We don't go to heaven or hell when we die. We're dead and in the grave. And like he says, my sheep will hear my voice. Well, when he says arise, his sheep will hear his voice. When he says arise, come forth, his sheep will hear his voice. Just like Lazarus, where, where he said, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of the grave, came out of the tomb. Same thing. That That's kind of a type of what happened. So, but Shavuot, the Holy Spirit came, Shavuot, or Pentecost, as most people call it, is, was put, the Holy Spirit coming upon us. Why? Because he put the law upon our heart. That's a fulfillment. The Holy Spirit coming upon us is a, fulfillment of Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34, that I will put the law upon their hearts. He didn't say the law was done away. He said, the, I will put it upon their hearts, which is the, the wedding contract. Just like at Sinai, they had the wedding con contract. They, they had Passover. They ended up in the wilderness. And at Pentecost, they received the Torah. Moses, Moshe, received the Torah. When, when, in Exodus 20, when, when God, Yahweh, started talking and the people said, No, we don't want to hear from him. We're afraid. You talk to us. 
it's not the mosaic law. He, Mosea, Moses was only the messenger. He wasn't the, he didn't create the law. He was only the messenger to teach them the Torah, which existed in Abraham's time because you can, it says Abraham kept my his, God's statutes. That's in Genesis 25 or 26. I think it's 25, 4. So you have the, the wedding contract, just like in a, in a Jewish wedding, there's a wedding contract, a, a marriage contract. So we was, he gave us the marriage contract before he left. Then we have the Feast of Trumpets. When he, you know, Ephesians, uh, not Ephesians, First Thessalonians 4, verse 17, that people love to quote as the rapture, is really the resurrection. Where it says, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then us who are alive and remain. And if you read the whole context, it has to do with comfort each other with these words. So, but the trumpets, he is our king. Kings were announced through trumpets. Then you have the Day of Atonement, when the bride is chosen. The bride makes herself ready. That's kind of what the whole purpose behind fasting is, I believe. is It afflicts, it afflicts this body, but it, spiritually it is very helpful. We prepare ourselves for the wedding, just like the lamb was chosen at the tenth day of the first month for Passover. His bride is chosen the tenth, tenth day of the seventh month. So he he announces his coming, and we we arise, and a, then you have atonement, where was the time when the high priest went into the holy of holies? Well, Yeshua Christ Jesus is our high priest. It makes that very clear in scripture. And it, and you read in 1 Thessalonians 4 that the dead in Christ shall rise first and, and we sh and then those who are alive remain shall be caught up in the air. If 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 you look at the universe as a temple and the the earth is the outer court, the air is the inner court which we, as a nation of kings and priests, we have access to. And so he meets us where we can, to where we can go as a nation of kings and priests. And he takes us before the Father into the wet, into the Holy of Holies, so to speak. That the, to meet his Father, when he said, I go to prepare a place for you, and I will come back. That's about the Jewish wedding, because that's what happened. Is the, the contract was signed, and then you have the, the the marriage contract was signed, and the bride was to keep it until the um, until her her groom returned, her husband, her future husband returned, and that's the way we are with. That's why the ketubah, the, the wedding contract, the Torah, is so important to us. It's because we are, if we're going to be the bride, we have, we have the ketubah. The, the Torah is the ketubah, the, the wedding, the marriage contract, the wedding contract, the marriage contract, that we as the bride, to the Messiah, a Jewish bride to a Jewish Messiah, because Paul talks about being a Jew inwardly, you know, and so, you know, we're there, and then, of course, Sukkot or Tabernacles, we shall always be with the Lord, well, that's part of it, is the feast, and what does Yeshua talk about? He talks about a parable where the the servants that the king says call all call the people to the the wedding for it is ready and the people that were invited don't answer so which in the parable would have been the Jews 
and not all Jews rejected Christ. They, they didn't all reject, reject Messiah. It was a partial blinding for a time. And then it, the, it went to the Gentiles, which was what Peter's vision was all about. It wasn't about food. It was about the Gentiles, because the Gentiles were unclean to the Jewish world. So hopefully that gives you a, a little bit of picture as to why the Holy Days are still so important in, in our walk as believers. Those that believe in Messiah, that Messiah has come, which is what the good news is. Shalom, shalom, and may Yahweh bless and keep him, make his face shine upon you and give you peace.